Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part 3, I'll share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieved the dirt path, the fence and finishing off the grass in the foreground, plus adding all those important final details. So be sure to watch it right through till the end, because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. This is where we left it in part two. Here's a selection of pencils I'll be using for the underdrawing. Just split them up into different groups so you can see a batch of blues, yellows and the other colours. Just focusing on the darkest area so we're just getting in this post first. Now, selection of colours here, I'm adding to the mix, which is the dark green, olive green and black. So I'm mixing them together to create the texture and feel I want in. Like everything else I do, I block it in first, get the basic shapes in, make sure everything's drawn correctly, going over that outline. And then just keep building it up. So we're just working on getting the shapes into position. For the shadows there I'm using Burnt Umber and Dark Ultramarine and sometimes purpley blue colour. And the shadow on the post there needed to put a bit of black in there but always mix something with the black. And then I'm using a bit of Lemon Yellow to get a bit of chroma in there as well. Even though it's in shadow there's still a glow that you have to achieve. So if you need a glow in there just add a bit of Lemon Yellow and it seems to do the trick. Just speed through this little bit here just to show you how I'm putting that um, colour into the post there. Just using that olive green, burnt sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, black and some cold red in there and dark ultramarine. So you're mixing all these different things together to create the atmosphere you're looking for. Just a case of playing and just having a go really and just keep changing things up. Now there's a little bit of a sign on this gate here and it says no on it so um, what I'm doing is just trying to keep it loose just basically getting the shapes in there just the shape of the letters and then just loosely do it to start with I'm using a burnt sienna for the red part of it uh, and then eventually it does come together but it's like everything else, just get it, the shapes in there first. I'm glazing over the top then with some um, ultramarine blue just to get that sort of shadow feel to the white of that sort of poster. Using different ultramarines now, I'm using light ultramarine, dark ultramarine and then using the burnt sienna uh, just to create the, the feeling I want. Here's some real time now, just showing you how I'm sharpening things up now, just to get the sort of, so you could actually read it and it says no on it. Uh, but you don't want to go over the top, you don't want it over detailed so the eye goes straight to it. It needs to be subtle, um, so you're not focusing on it too much, because obviously the eye needs to go down that dirt path into the distance. So I'll just put enough detail and that I need to, just to make it look believable. Uh, but not too much so it don't stand out. Just to mention when I do use black I always add something to it because if you just use black on its own it will look a bit dead. It needs to be mixed together with something uh, and I experiment with all different colours um, so you, you, you know you, you visually can see what I'm doing anyway but you just always make sure you just mix something with black. And when I did this gate, I st stood back a lot and looked in the mirror, just making sure every, you know, like spar of that gate there is the same width or it feels right, but not making the actual spars too sharp, keeping them sort of soft. So again, not standing out too much. It needs to sort of melt into everything. 
um, because again the eye needs to go down that path so you have to be aware of that uh, mixing the black with the other colours like I mentioned earlier um, and just you just gotta go just gotta go for it really and just um, see what happens but you see you notice when you look on the reference image the the distance between each uh, section is all different as because it's quite a rustic f gate anyway so you don't have to have it perfectly all in the correct position because it isn't like that anyway um, again using that burnt sienna in places with lemon yellow to create that sort of mossy feel to it and sort of reflected light on it Similar thing with the other post, uh, just blocking it all in and just getting it basically into the correct feel. But I will put more detail on this later on when I do that side of things. So what I'm going to do really focus on the left hand side of the painting and do the all the sort of shadows and the dirt path before going on to that fence and the foliage around it. So I'm just roughly blocking it in here. Um, but I like I say, I will put loads more detail into that later. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Right, I'm with the actual blocking in now of the dirt path. So I'm using that sort of rich, it's actually a flesh colour tone that is in the Karen Dash range. Uh, I'm using that um, down for the first colour. Now, when you look at the reference, it looks more paler, but you know, when I saw it on my computer, it's more the colour I'm painting it. Because uh, each computer sort of shows the reference image slightly different, so y you can only paint what you see. So when I saw it on my computer, it's a lot more richer than what you're seeing on the reference image. Now for the underpainting here I'm using burnt umber and I'm using a purpley blue colour. Just slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm using the actual pastel mat uh, to create a texture as well because I'm doing it very lightly and I'm trying to create that speckled look so I'm, I'm making it scratchy so I'm not putting too much pigment on there um, so it creates the right sort of feel because this will be used when I start putting the actual rich colours on all these little speckles and that will will add to the detail eventually make it a lot easier when I start putting the detail stage in just to repeat what I said in part one and part two regarding the reference image being small enough so you can see the whole of the image so you get to feel the atmosphere and even this is just a blocking i'm still feeling it and trying to create that energy all right here's the selection of pencils i'll be using for the grass just to recap on part two now, this is a karen dash really bright green so i'm using that first but uh, just to recap on part two again i'm glazing over that with burnt sienna just to make it warmer uh, so because it's very hard to find the correct color you're looking for so you have to sort of mix colors or glaze colors on top of these so that's why i'm putting this in first and then you'll see me using uh, burnt sienna over that so i'm using dark green and olive green are mixed in with that as well so it's creating different sorts of subtleties and you notice the grip of my pencil i'm using pencil slightly different here as well to get the texture so i'm holding it with my thumb and the fingers but the fingers are underneath just holding the pencil sturdy but just moving my shoulders to create really subtle uh, directions and texture so varying the different ways I'm holding the pencil as well as the different pencils uh, mixing together to create all that subtlety now to change that color subtly I'm using a warm blue from the Contia Paris range here which does the trick 
So you have to keep experimenting using different pencils till you get the right colour shade and it's a case of just playing really and just seeing what develops. Right, just using the burnt umber just to darken up areas here and there. Just putting little suggestions. I'm using it in the shadows with the purpley blue, but then lining it up with a bit of white to create in that sort of a purpley grey colour. Now I'm using a different white now. I'm using the Caran d'Ache Chinese white because the Carbothella is not giving me the richness I need. Sometimes you have to go to the Caran d'Ache and add a colour from there to get the richness so when you glaze over the top that shines through then. Uh, and what is great about the Caran d'Ache colours is it sticks to the pastel mat and so when you do glaze over it you don't lose all that texture you've put in. So that's why I use the Caran d'Ache sometimes rather than the Carbothellos. You just have to be patient with this, it just takes a while to build up with the layers but every layer you put on it creates a texture that helps the realism of it. It's just layer after layer and you just got to keep building it up and just taking your time with it and be patient, it all comes together in the end. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for all their wonderful support every month for pledging. It really helps with creating this free content for you on YouTube. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check the link in the description below. Now this painting will be on my Patreon. There's the part ones there already, step by step, the sky and the branches. But part two will be the rest of it and that will be on at some point as well, where you can see every mark I make. This stage of the painting I decided to block in this area at the foreground now with the grass but I'm going to focus completely before I go to that uh, the actual dirt road and the shadows. Just putting those little highlights in there you know it's dappled sunlight coming through the leaves there just making some sort of spots of light on the path there so decided to put those in but again not going too mad with the vibrancy of it just enough so it's subtle uh, using the Caran d'Ache to get that sort of vibrancy but then I'll glaze over them with other colours just to subtle it up if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow Like I say, you've just got to be patient and build these layers up. Um, what I tend to do is just let go of the mind, open the heart, and just imagine I'm there, just melt into it, and just let the movements just happen. What I tend to do is just put the lighter bits in first, then glaze over the top, lighter bits, glaze over the top, lighter bits, glaze over the top. Sometimes you use white, and sometimes other colours. But what I'm using here, look, I've decided, you know, on the glowy bits is to introduce these two colours, which are flesh, flesh colour tints from the Caran d'Ache range. And I'm putting those in and then glazing over the top with burnt sienna. So I'm putting little bits here and there now to create that chroma by using these Caran d'Ache flesh colour tones. All it is is yellow ochre and a bit of red mixed together, but because the pigment is so rich, and vibrant it really helps with trying to get that glow because you have to put that glow down first and then glaze different colors on the top and then it just seems to shine through here's some real time just showing you how I've done all the little bits of stones and that just a little dot here and there and just take your time with it. 
then using the burnt umber then just to create that little bit of shadow around the little stones but you have to be careful not to go too too much just a very subtle dot you know just a little faint mark getting conscious now of how long this video is becoming so I'm just gonna have to speed it up now uh, we've gone through all this in part two with the leaves um, so I'll just go through this quickly uh, so it's just like a recap of what I've done before so basically it's just sort of blocking in first get an idea where things are and then just build it up slowly but surely getting the darks in making sure they are in first then it helps you to judge the midtones then so I'm using the olive green and then that real lemon yellow as well to get the real highlights on the leaves and then just keep glazing with different colors over the top of that if you haven't seen part one and part two please check that out because you get loads of tips from there and I go into a lot of real time how to mix the greens so please refer to that if you want a closer look at that but I will slow it down here again just to recap on it it's just a case of putting real highlights so I'm using the light green and just little squiggles here and there and then going over them with the dark green again little squiggles here and there and brown as well because brown will create a nice shadow a brown with green creates a warm green shadow because there's a lot of red in brown so you can desaturate green with burnt sienna burnt umber or sometimes you'll see me use cold red uh, if I want deep dark shadows I use a dark green and cold red so you have to experiment with these different things to get the correct feel of the green you're looking for, the shadow of it. Now I'm just lining up the bark of this tree because it's too dark. So with the final touches I'm looking at the overall feel of it and some places will be a little dark so you have to lighten them up. Some places will be too sharp, which you'll have to subtle up and soften. So it's a case of getting the values, the edges, the chroma, and the overall feel right. So you're just going around, looking at the whole image, and sensing what needs to be changed. To help you see what needs to be changed, what I tend to do is look in a mirror. I sometimes take a photograph on my mobile phone, see how it looks on there. I'll take it into another room, see what it looks like in a different light. My approach is to open up awareness and see through there. And they do that by opening the heart so you don't think about what needs to be changed, you just feel it. So just let go and just feel. Here's the painting at the correct angle. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, here's some links that you might be interested in.